Hey, 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 it's the Bama Standard. We are brought to you every week by our guys at Workpace Solutions and Oakmont Financial Services, LLC. I'm Justin Riley, your host, and with me as always is a living legend, all-SEC linebacker from University of Alabama, 1999 SEC Championship winner, Marvin Constant, and hey, the senior analyst of Touchdown Alabama Magazine, Mr. Stephen M. Smith. What's, What's going, going on, on? fellas? I'm, I'm yeah. already, I'm, I'm already getting myself ready for this mock combine that Marvin gonna put me through. So, I've got, I've gotten myself prepared for this mock combine. Sir, you would never be ready. You think, old oh boy from Michigan, told his Achilles tendon. You go out there, your whole carburetor and transmission gonna fall out. <laughs> yeah. This is. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is still a thing, man. So we need to make this happen on a day. Uh, Stephen M. Smith and I will compete against each other for all the glory. For they all the glory. glory. Nobody wants to see you two compete. Plenty of people do. <laughs> and stepping into the building is a two-time national champion and a champion of leg day, Bo Scarborough. What's going on, Bo? What's Bo? going on, man? What's Bo? Going on? But well, will you tell Stephen and Justin nobody wants to see them compete in pro day events? That's gonna be like watching toddlers with ankle weights tied to them under the forty. Come on, man! I'm telling you, man, we're gonna surprise you. Yeah, hey, Justin, I'm ready, I'm ready to go. Justin, what's up? Uh, tell them about that show yesterday. Man, we had a, it. Was, it was a trip, man. We had a we had a crazy time with the with the. The boys over at the CTS interview room. Hey, they had us rolling. They had us rolling. They had us rolling. Joe, Joey, and the guys from the CTS. Oh, y'all made a man. Y'all, y'all, y'all back to me. <laughs> we good, man. We good. But listen, Since, not here. What did I miss? Uh, everything. If you <laughs> if you jump into the group chat every every now and then, you might find something. But look. We're not group here chat. to talk about all that. <laughs> what group Look, chat are you referring to? Man, we got people talking noise about Steven and myself already. You're not supposed to catch your breath halfway through a 40. <laughs> man, talking listen, man. If you and Steve go out there and run 40, y'all prostate can fall out. Hey, Steve. Yeah. Steve, that's your girlfriend? Yeah. Oh. Who? On Facebook. You got a Is girlfriend it? now? Where have you yeah. been, man? Well, listen. Oh, that Tinder profile really paid off big time. <laughs> <laughs> Still with the Tinder profile. I don't even got one, huh? Hey, well, listen, we guys. We ain't call you black man no more, huh? <laughs> <laughs> we, uh... <laughs> Man, we missed you, Marvin. <laughs> What's Steve uh, Brown at, man? He's got a live event he has to be at tonight. He's on tour. He's on tour. So he's uh, he's here in, in uh, spirit. But listen, we do have a man who's here that uh, we're going to honor the proper way to start things out. The biggest hype man in the business. Stephen M. Smith is here to introduce him. Stephen M. Smith, go ahead and do your thing. Well, when you talk about football royalty, and I mean just major football royalty in Alabama, the guy, this this guy was YouTube highlights before YouTube highlights ever came out. And that's how big this man was. We're talking about literally one of the greatest, greatest, greatest running backs to ever play. In the 1980s, he comes from an athletic football family. family. When you look at the whole Goo family, and you look at Antonio Langham as a relative of the family, then this brother right here played in the NFL. So he NFL royalty. We're talking about them Tampa Bay Buccaneers, them Denver Broncos, the New York Giants, them St. Louis Rams. I mean, everywhere. He was everywhere. We're bringing him in right now. The man, the legend, the myth, the prestigious, Kerry Good is here, people. 
Yes, hey, sir. Guys, yes, sir. Doing? Man, glad. What's the first thing you said? What'd you say? You said Antonio Langham. You said Antonio Langham, y'all play cousin. What? No, Antonio was born in. That's my uh, aunt's son. Yeah, I just like giving him a hard time. My parents raised him. Yeah, well, man, it is an honor to have you here, man. We're excited. We're going to do things right. To start things off, I want to talk about the fact that you recently had a lot accomplished, and that is seeing your Atlanta Braves play in the World Series. If you would, man, tell us what went into that and then uh, your overall emotions that you experienced it live. Well, first of all, uh, I was looking, trying to get on the ticket list. And it was sold out, and so I went to aftermarket, and that was a little bit out of my budget, right? So I then I was just uh, told a friend of mine that went to Alabama. She started calling people, and mm -hmm. we ended up with um, Pete Frades and uh, a couple guys that did the bucket challenge. Well, the senior Pete Frades, his dad called, and he. Uh, pretty well connected and they sent me tickets down not for only one game but two games oh wow so i ended up going to games uh game four and five but i tell you this that uh game five i had front row seats and uh i'd rather go back to game four and get back up in 200 level because I was able to see everything uh, down on the uh, on the field, man. Hell, everybody kept standing up, and I couldn't. I'm locked in this wheelchair, and I couldn't see nothing. But I had a hell of a time. Well, I bet that's a once in a lifetime opportunity, man. That's incredible. It was, man. Only way to make it better is better. The other one game five. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, but hey, but I take what I can get. <laughs> Without question, man, that, that's a blessing that you were able to see that, man. What a what a true blessing. Yeah, you know, I grew up playing baseball. I had to put it down when I hit it off to Bama. So, uh, you know, I always thought I could one day be in the majors, but. I had one problem. Couldn't hit the curveball. What? And that was a prerequisite. Man, we could have let you borrow Stephen M. Smith glasses. It would have made it look like it was right there. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. It, hey, I'm always thinking it's going to hit me in the head. That thing's coming pretty quick. Man, as fast as you were, man, it wouldn't have came near you. I think it's man, the I out the way. I think it's the break on that curveball, though. That thing be breaking like that? Yeah, it is a break. But sometimes it don't break. Yeah, so I, I, to... I didn't play baseball, so I don't know anything about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, let's get back to football. You know, if anyone can make a case, honestly, for being the first family at Alabama – it definitely be you, man. You supplied how many of your your uh, family there to the university? What was it like growing up in that competitive household? Well, man, you know when when you grow up in it, you really don't pay no attention. Hey, you just out there trying to compete against each other. You know, Pierre or Chris had four or five touchdowns. I'm trying to get six, so it, <laughs> it's just the way it was. So you know, in the uh, in the little league, Chris is playing playing the uh, it was Pee Wee um, they made Pierre made it, the Clyde and Antonio. So it was, we all eventually you know got up. I played with all of them uh, at one point in time. Uh, I think I'm the only one that can say that. Well, Pierre did too. Well, you know, it's good to be, have your brother on the team with you. But, you know, when we were playing, um, I mean, junior varsity, Chris has been on the varsity and playing B team. My junior varsity team 
Paint that butt for him. <laughs> that's, that's always my that's always my trophy for him. I'm like, hey, but I beat you in at least one time in my life. <laughs> that's what's up. Well, listen, uh, I kept this a, uh, a secret leading up to this uh, this show. We actually have somebody in our waiting room that uh, is going, a surprise guest. And uh, he's a former teammate of yours, and he wanted to join in the fun tonight. He is a former, one of the greatest tight ends to ever play at the University of Alabama and a 13-year NFL veteran, two-time participant in the, the Super Bowl, Mr. Howard Cross. Oh. <laughs> What's yeah! going on, brother? Hey man, I was just gonna make it. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely appreciate you joining us, my friend. Hey man, we're still on the side of the dirt, trying to get it done. You know how we do. Oh yeah. Good to see you, boy. Good to see you, man. You the legend in in in, in, in full effect. Absolutely. In man, my own if you mind, would. brother. In my own mind. <laughs> in all our minds, for sure. <laughs> I hear you. Well, uh, brother, uh, Howard, if you would, start us off, man, on, on your relationship with Carrie Good and uh, any good stories that we'd love to hear the stories. If, oh, I, if any come to mind. Hey, hey. We got, we got a G rate hey, a lot Howard. of them. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Howard, be careful. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> nah, don't be careful. We we, we, we low. We, it's open mic night here. Right. Yeah, we don't do that no more. All we I all make money off. You never know. I did hey, the, I, the yeah. Less than a mile. Less than a mile from home. Scared to go. Yep. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know I would never do that. So. <laughs> uh the story that comes to mind for Carrie is like the first time I saw Carrie Good as a sophomore in high school at this little little uh, school, New Hope High School, and uh, Hazelwood rolled in to play us, and they let me actually start. I think the guy that was supposed to be starting was in trouble, so they was getting giving him a little break, and they were talking about Carrie Good and how great he was, and Alabama was there to see him and everything. So I got in the game, and I tackled him a couple times. I'm like, that's all right. He ain't had no touchdowns and he didn't do anything. Coach was like, all right, we're gonna put the starter back in. You did a good job. Carrie scored six touchdowns in the second half. <laughs> <laughs> he scored every time he touched the ball. He dropped back the punt one time and then decided not to punt it and ran it in for a touchdown. I mean it was embarrassing. I'm like, oh that is. y'all only want one wasn't gonna rush me, so I took off. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Same thing like up there. That dude right there might be a little special. <laughs> <laughs> just a tad bit. <laughs> a tad bit. I, I mean, took the punt and just ran with it. All right. It, it, it was embarrassing, man. I'm telling you. They were like rushing. Like, look, try to keep making hey, my, my coach always gave me green light. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you must have been a leprechaun, dang You had the greenest light I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Howard, I can tell you, brother. Unfortunately, I uh, I scored every way possible that yeah, night. I, I got to see it personally. <laughs> <laughs> Punt return, kickoff return, interception, oh, yeah. a pass, and a run. Return. And did y'all play any defense? My God. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, played, we played, sort of played defense. We were out there to make sure you had people to run around. We didn't want well, to. What happened was <laughs> they, uh, they went in at halftime leading. And uh, uh, I ran by Coach Lewis Campbell, the, yeah. my recruiter for Alabama. And he said, Brother, you have to pick it up. Ah. <laughs> and I picked, that's terrible. Wish I'd have met him. Uh, <laughs> and, the, and, the, and the next, the next big memory I have of Gary was uh, I think they played Boston College. Time. I was watching them on TV. Oh yeah. And he rushed for so many years, just running all over him. I think he hurt his knee and still rushed for a touchdown. Limping, he limped to the, he limped past the entire team for a touchdown. I'm like. <laughs> 
in my mind, I'm like, what in the hell is he on? <laughs> and I would always tell people that somebody was chasing. <laughs> but they weren't fast enough to catch you. That's, that's for sure. They look like they look like, like, to get they like my high school defense chasing you. What they look like? <laughs> I don't believe in getting hit. No. So hey, if you one of the strongest people I ever met, one of the fastest people, one of the kindest people I ever met. So, man, and the whole family, just great people. Yeah, without a doubt. Before and that I had to be. My wife told me, tell you, hello. Oh, tell us. I uh, now, that's the I most important message she's going to give you all night. <laughs> <laughs> If you, if you got a wife, you got a, you got a, the related messages. If, if, you, if you want to do the right thing, I ain't got no wife, so I can, I, can, I don't have to play no messages. <laughs> <laughs> Smart man. Smart man. Get that, get that life up. <laughs> man. Uh, Kerry, when you first got to Alabama, what was your relationship like with uh, Lenny Patrick, uh, Ricky Moore, and uh, Paula Carruth? How did they help you transition to the college game? Well, you know, when you first come in, um, I came in with a uh, at this time eight eight running backs that year, and I was last man on depth chart. So uh, my fight was trying to get uphill, and with Lenny, Joe, Joe Carter, and Paul Lott, I was no threat at that time. So they were willing to help me out. So I absorbed it. Absorbed everything they told me, and um, tried not to get hit. <laughs> <laughs> Bo, that's oddly similar to the, uh, your rival, Alabama man. Y'all are eight deep, right? Nine. Nine. Bo Scarborough was nine deep. Came in that room and had to earn his. Like I did it. Bo did a hell of a job. Yeah, he did. Y'all didn't do it like I did. I, I looked at the depth chart. They, they said, you can play any position you want. We had one tight end, so I play that spot. That's my spot. <laughs> oh, you took the easy way out. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like 100 yeah. linebackers, 100. I'm like, man, you can throw the ball. You want to play quarterback? Had nine <laughs> quarterbacks. Man. You yeah, I don't want to do that either. How you gonna take the easy way out? Well, well how you get to Alabama? Season. They had an all American at my position who was gonna hey. be three years ahead of me. Hey man, he that's your fault. You talking high school <laughs> like that told me always, hey, look, you always look for the exit. <laughs> hey, but, but, but you know what happened though? One year after I was on campus, that all American transferred because he knew the young buck wasn't taking no yeah. crap. His there days you go. Was there you go. Yeah, man. I you laughed. Still my using that same story. <laughs> yeah, it's the truth. Hey, it ain't many people that can make an all American transfer. That's pretty good. I like that. I like that. I give it to you, no, my boy. I give it to you. You the man. Hey, you the best now. You the best that you ever did. That's you the best. Right. Hey, man. man. You, that was a great uh, pick for you. That's it, smart. It got you in the NFL. Yeah, you know what? It, it kept me around. It, it kept, yeah. kept me getting beat up. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Goob, I have a question for you. How, how, uh, how did it feel after scoring that uh, their return against uh, Boston College for 99 yards? Well, you know, at that time, well, that was my third touchdown. Everybody <laughs> like it. Uh, there was something special, and I'm like, man. I used to do this in high school every night. <laughs> so, you know, for me, it was business as usual. <laughs> yeah. I had seen a little highlight where you had uh, scored that touchdown and, you know, like, uh, it, was a whole, it was a whole big deal, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. But the one before that, I just cut the wrong way. I, I ran the one before that back. Probably about sixty yards. Yep. I was trying to wait on my block, and I said, "The hell with that! I'm gone." <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> gone. Yeah, 
You must have had Justin Riley out there blocking for you, bringing up the real slow as all like get out. That's hey man, I, I, I was physical. That's all you need to know. <laughs> I can move piles, but how many people can say they got sixty yards on kickoff return going the other direction, <laughs> Re rerouting his direction? That's pretty impressive. Something else, man. What a family. Well, that's that's come over and told me that. Stay with it, you'll get a touchdown the next time. So I stay with it. End up scoring the touchdown. Yep. Yeah. You were running too, man. You were running. I don't think anybody had seen speed like yours at that point in time. You were you're definitely ahead of your time, brother. I mean, you were blazing down that field. Hey man. When you play at my high school. I was bigger than a lineman, so you end up having to run like that. <laughs> oh, we, we ran Same thing for me, except for when I went to IMG. When I went right. to IMG, boy, I would protect that. My shorty lineman was 6'3". And he was the silver. I, I believe, Kerry, y'all, did, did y'all have that lineman? We, we were in the state, uh, state uh, track meet, and y'all had a, a lineman run the, in the four by four? Yep. I was like, man, they got linemen running in the damn right relay race. <laughs> One no room in the backfield, man. <laughs> Big dude. I'm like, Lord, I'm bigger than I am. Look at that. Man, that, that's Boy, Hazelwood right there, bro. There, so so you was over there doing the shot put is what you say. Yeah, I, I ran a 400 meters, shot, disc. So a girl beat me at the disc. I'm like, I ain't doing that no more. <laughs> She, she was stout, boy. Uh, she's like, did she, sign, uh, <laughs> did she sign that all about? I say what? That girl. Oh she's no, Pruitt. What was where did she go to school at? It was the Pruitt sisters. They were from uh, Hazel Green or somewhere. They did all track stuff. They, they were something else. So the real question is, going head-to-head -head against Derek Thomas and Cornelius Bennett, how many times did you run them over in practice, Gary? Never. <laughs> <laughs> Biscuit didn't listen. You can tell us. <laughs> hey, 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 Karen, so y'all have to get me? <laughs> Let me tell you one thing. You don't live long running over people. Or into them, either. <laughs> Uh, me and Ben could have a uh, we had a pack <laughs> if you don't try to bull rush me I won't cut you <laughs> <laughs> so you know you make your coach happy and I'll make mine happy <laughs> everybody else coach you know coach. running back Y'all take the easy way out with this cut block and stuff, too, man. Y'all hey, got to be the softest hey. people on the field. Why y'all want to cut it's us? Let's <laughs> do what we here to do. You think I'm going to do Listen, you got to understand. Y'all got at least eight yards ahead of start run. We just sitting there. You know what I mean? <laughs> right, right. Oh, full force. Hold on. Time out. Was that not in the job description when you took it, though? Hold on. Wait, wait, you got no type of linebacker. Hey. Yes, hey. hey, man, we're going to go easy then. Come in there and try to ram you on your tish strap. You know what I'm saying? Hey, uh, cutting hey. people is in the job description. <laughs> yeah. I'm good. The, job description, the job description is to stop you. It is, they, didn't put, they didn't put a lot of like uh, abilities on it. It's like, oh, you you stopping? You not the quarterback. That's what you do. <laughs> hey, Howard. Somebody yeah. asked you about uh, playing in those white helmets. Oh yeah, yeah. What what are y'all's yeah. thoughts on that? Should Bama do it again? Yeah, man. We, yeah, I, I think. Do what again? Uh, hey man, change it up. Do what again, Justin? Bring back the white helmets. White they, helmet. They're the only team, I think, that wore the white helmets. They're the last team to wear them. Well, the last Look. one, um, uh, I think they, uh, before that, it was like the 65. Uh, uh, if, if, if they do that, they got to get 
If they do that, they got to get everybody that came through there white hair. Look, check this out. <laughs> <laughs> look, well, we were trying, hey, we were trying to play the white Y'all got y'all with them. With the, mm. with the all, but Mr. Meadows <laughs> wasn't giving nobody. No, I'm not yeah, bad to we tried to play in the White Hill, but you know, Dubos was the coach at the time. This is Alabama. We're built on tradition. We don't do fancy things around here. He would not go for it. You got to wear black shoes, no white helmet, white shoestrings. So we can't even wear black shoestrings? Like. Yeah. I was more of a blue collar guy. You give me the uniform, I play. I don't care what you give me. You know, just go not let's get it done. <laughs> Man, I, go I, I, I like tying their shirt up I, and I, I getting like their abs out. I'm like, I'm putting pads on, so I don't get hurt. Oh, uh, come on. Like Dad, Dion. You, cut, you, cut you feel like Dion? I know you did. No, I yeah, ain't. You, uh -huh. you play too. I, I didn't do any of that. I, my entire career, college, pro, high school, I put on everything they issue, I'm making sure I'm safe. And I went out there, played hard, came on back in it. So I got it now. You was the one out there with that forearm pad on with that roll of nickels in it. Yep. <laughs> you didn't want to hit me. I put you like that. <laughs> Man. Now, Carrie, you were a part of an interesting time at Alabama, that transition phase from Coach Bryant to Coach Perkins. What kind of challenge did that present to you being on that first team post uh, Bryant? Well, for me, uh, you know, being, I was recruited by Coach, Coach Bryant, then Coach Perkins took over. But being a, the in that freshman class, all you – Really knew who was Coach Perkins, so you you would uh, have to add some of those other guys that will play for Coach Bryant and know the difference in and uh, between the two. But at that same time, I thought we had a uh, a problem with who really wanted to be in control. You know, everybody wanted to step up. Of course, Coach Perkins was going to allow that. And so, yeah, you, you, uh, your power broke. Your money people want to have control as well. So I thought that was a little infighting that ultimately got him to head out to Tampa from my point of view. Because we're in Hawaii and next thing. We're laying in Tuscaloosa, and he's back in Tampa. And I'm like, well, is he going to say bye? <laughs> but yeah, you know, we came around and told everything, told everybody what was going on, and that, and we got together trying to uh, voice our opinion on who should be the coach. Well, we could do that, and in walked Bill Curry. So you know that uh, my group went through it. Yep. <laughs> what was the difference in styles as far as coaching goes? Between Curry oh, and Coach Perkins? Between Curry and Perkins? Yeah. Well, uh, the best way I can answer that is probably <laughs> uh, Curry. I'm not sure. Coach Perkins was uh, – from what I gather, a little more in the Coach Brian mold. Man, I did a mm. gut check one day. I ran the ball 16 times in a row. Mm. Mm. In a row. In a scrimmage 16 times. Yep. Man, my tongue was hanging. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, it was. I, I learned pretty quick. Yeah, you, you after know. That fifth, after the fifth, after the fifth carry, don't take it down. <laughs> Get you about two yards. Get you about two, three yards laid out. Yep. <laughs> I'll be back to you. Yeah, but Perkins was Perkins. What Kerry said was a, was an Alabama coach, and then 
and done a good job of steeped in the history, steeped in the tradition. And and Bill Curry, although was a decent coach, wasn't a Bama guy. So he was more about I played with Vince Lombardi and Oh yeah. I said, man, I love you, man, but don't nobody care about that up here. Well, you know, the problem with that. Different down south, huh? With that, uh, you got young guys don't know who they have been Lombardi or the, That's right. They didn't have other a clue. Than name. But, I mean, you know, so, for me, uh, I had no problem with Coach Curry. Yeah. For you, mm-hmm. Howard, for you, Howard, I mean, what's it like when you – post Bear Bryant and you saw what Coach Bryant did, how tough was it for Coach Curry and Coach Perkins to try to live up to that, being behind the man like that? You know, when you have a coach that's like, you know, legendary, it's always going to be tough. The second guy is always going to catch it no matter what, you know. So uh, Ray was in there. He was trying to get it done. He, he did a good job. He was, he was getting good recruits. But he was like, like Kerry said, he was dealing with a lot of, outside sources and people want to be involved and stuff uh, yeah and they offered him offered him a mint to go to tampa so like i tell, Let anybody, tell you something they offer you that money you think first as a rough you wait until this is coming out of the oh no it ain't, it ain't gonna be it's gonna hey be hey, hey. Speak, speaking of coach Sabin, what do y'all think about Pete goldie oh, oh, here we i go. knew it i knew here he was gonna go. work this in <laughs> Here we talking about coaches. What are y'all thoughts about him and Alabama's defensive performance the past three years? Oh Lord! <laughs> <laughs> You've been telling the truth hey, uh, all night. Don't stop I, now. Listen, I, I think hey, I, 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 I didn't just, take that. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't think that. You know, and I and I tell people all the time the difference in in college football than any other any other sports when you got the horses you can get it done and and sometimes like some of the key guys go down your horses that are backing them up ain't quite there yet and you see it year in year out you got some really phenomenal players probably gonna be first round picks might be high draft picks and they'll tweak a knee or do something they go out and then the guy that's behind him he's behind him for a reason so do you, you're playing in the sec where everybody is like going into the NFL or looks like they're going into the NFL, it's hard to keep up with them. And, they, and they've and they changed philosophies at, at, in Bama two or three times because they went from, you know, we're going to pound and gr- grind and pound to uh, we're going to air it out to, you know, you, you, when you when you change philosophy, you change your recruiting strategy. So everybody's not the same size. Not everybody not. What do you Go think ahead. about it? <laughs> I don't think he's the right person for the job. I mean, yeah, you change the defensive philosophy hasn't changed much over the years. Defense is playing defense. The only thing that you see that's really changing the defense are the linebacks are a little bit smaller in the mm-hmm. middle of the defense. That's about it. But pass coverage is still pass coverage. A lot of times, I'll say it, and I've been saying it for the past three years, they look confused. They look like they're lost. They look like they're not well coached up. When they make adjustments, it's, it's like, who they don't know who's covering who they're getting beat up front we don't look that physical if you look at the lsu game last year they just man handled us you go back and you look at the texas a m game man handled us you yeah. can look at the game when they had all of the starters present and we still were getting beat they don't look fundamentally sound and for the well, first time in a number of years you're going to see something happen this april you won't see an alabama defender drafted in the first round can I ask you this? Do you think being young has anything to do with that? I don't yeah. because what happened last year? What happened the year before that? You know, you can only say your team is young for so long, you know, because that defense has trended downward. You look at the amount of points in yards per game that defense has given up the past three years, it had that it has been the worst of the saving era. Well, again, I'm gonna say this and you said you 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 brought the point up. Where you don't see those guys going in the first round, and, and you can say whatever you want to about coaching, the players make plays, right? And like, and I, right. I, and I'm gonna tell you that, like, you can be mad at hey, a coach. Or whatever. I played with a lot of different yeah. dudes, a lot of different coaches, but players make plays. It's it's not it's Jimmy and the Joes at the end of the day. It's, you gotta have, have a lot. right? But here's the thing: 
it looks like, you know, they, they're confused. I see they simplified the defense halfway through the season. Mm. If you know your playbook this thick is too much for your defense and you're still trying to run it, as a coach, you got to be smart enough to say, okay, this isn't working. Let me simplify things to a point to where I can get my guys to execute, play fast, and play hard. That's on the coach. If guys are still confused about assignments, that's on the coach. Well, and if the guy ain't getting it done, put somebody else in. Well, you can't say you don't have players route. when you signed ten let's number one recruit classes route. in a row. When you when you go to NFL, it's your responsibility to learn that damn playbook. Mm. Cover to cover. <laughs> that's the difference between NFL and college. No, it's and not. And here, here's, here's the difference. You have responsibilities when you're in college. You got to go to class and everything. But you have a lot of free time. Yeah. You, know, you got tons of free time. And when you have your free time, you got to study. Like, I prided myself when I when I played ball was, like, know everything about what they're asking you to do. Know what the guy beside you on each side you have to do. Like, you should be able to play almost any position on your side of the ball because you're studying it. Just like you're studying your class, whatever. It's your responsibility. I had, had no no – Thoughts of going into the NFL. I had no thoughts of anything. I was going to be a banker or something. I'm like, you know, and probably would have had, but I wouldn't have to have a knee replacement if I'd have been a banker. So, I, but I, but I <laughs> about, hey, hold on, time out. You having a knee replacement? I already did it. When'd you do it? I did it January 18th. I had mine December 23rd. Yeah, I already playing <laughs> golf. <laughs> well, real quick, yeah, guys, before we go any time? further. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but but you got but you got to learn, and you got to know how to. Uh, you, like, my son plays football at Notre Dame. Right now, plays defensive line. He ain't no big kid. He's like six foot one, two seventy, two seventy five. He asks me all the time, "What's the most important thing for me to do?" I said, "Number one, learn your place. They should never tell you or correct you because you're doing something wrong. Number two, have fun." I said, most of them kids don't really want to play anyway. That's yeah, it. That's the same thing they did in coach. <laughs> you know, right now. Right yeah. now, Rick is here. My first speech was, first thing you got to do is know what the hell you're doing. Mm -hmm. Right. If you don't know what you're doing, you ain't going to make good sense. You get, you get exposed. Uh, right. Well, but, uh, but it's the not second difficult. Thing is, Control the stuff you can, and that's being in shape, knowing your playbook, and that's it. That's in any job you got, man. Right. So, but as a coach, you, you gotta doing. know who's willing to to learn that play. For like, I, as a red shirt freshman, I started. By mm -hmm. the third game in the season, I was calling my own audibles and adjustments on the defense because I knew every inch of that playbook, and coach right. trusted me because he knew I knew it all. And because you cared about it. Yeah, because you went for to embarrass me. Well, yeah, but, you all, a, but you also had an extra year. You said freshman, extra year. Yeah. As a freshman, but, but, I knew my playbook. That's because yeah, I didn't want to make. Uh, but I didn't want to make I'm any saying. mistake. But why do they look do so confused I mean. still? Yeah, but listen, you, you you can say confused. It's all about like if they down there chasing them little skirts and hanging out, and I hope they not because my daughter down school there at school, but. Uh, <laughs> You got your shotgun. Yeah, I got these. Still got these hands. But uh, yeah. <laughs> but, but, hey, huh? Don't get what you did down there. Hey man, I ain't gonna talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're right. Well, uh, I no stories. I was quiet. <laughs> we'll uh, we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, real quick, guys. Real quick. Y'all speak about coaches. Well, I actually have another surprise for you guys. I have a man in the waiting room who's a legendary coach. He coached these two gentlemen right here. I'd like to introduce to y'all Bill Curry. What's coach going Curry! on, Coach? How are you doing? Hello, guys. How you doing? Hey, hey, Bill. <laughs> man, glad to have you I'd in. Like to just, I'd like to just keep listening. I was informed by that conversation that was going on about <laughs> who learned the playbook and who didn't and how oh. quickly it was learned. There, there you go. <laughs> man. Hey man, I didn't want to make I want didn't want to be the one. Can't can't be the one of the game because I'm I made a mistake. So All you right. gotta learn this stuff. 
You learn, you learn yep. early on to know everything you possibly can know about the playbook because you never know when they're going to call your number. I went, we mm-hmm. played San Diego Chargers one year when they were the San Diego Chargers. I don't know, they're L.A. Chargers now. And I remember Bavaro got hurt in three plays into the game. I'm like, well, they're like, well, you know the next spot, right? Yeah, I got, I got it. Don't worry about it. And then the next tight end got hurt. I think it was Moat. They're like, well, you're starting five plays into the game. I played the whole game. I was like, like you did a good job. I'm like, yep, thank you, appreciate it. I'm like, when are you guys coming back? <laughs> <laughs> Big dudes, man. Like, what do you got me out here doing? <laughs> you, have to, you have to know everything, man. <laughs> Well, Coach Curry is an absolute blessing to have you on. If you would, man, tell us what was it like, gentlemen, and if you have any great stories to lead off on them, by all means, let them loose. Oh, you're, talk, you're talking about me talking about Curry? Yes, yeah. sir. <laughs> yeah. What I remember about Curry that has uh, has not changed was a constant, upbeat, cheerful attitude. And uh, those were difficult times because there was a lot of controversy around the program. But once we got on the, once we got on the practice field or on the game field, all that disappeared. Um, I'm eternally indebted to all the guys who knocked themselves out and did learn the playbook. Virtually all of them did. Not 100%, but very close. <laughs> Learned what they were supposed to do. Howard Cross certainly did. My thing was, I, I like I like winning. And you can't win if you don't know what you're doing. That's exactly right. Um, Howard wanted to know why we didn't throw deep to him more often. I and, couldn't uh, be down the field. <laughs> we, we didn't always answer his question but we, we always called his plays when, when we needed it when we needed something but anyhow the thing about the carry and the whole good family is they had a constant upbeat positive attitude and i thought i hoped and prayed that with the reality of als the lou gehrig's disease I prayed that that wouldn't change him. And I've been to a couple of things, a couple of functions honoring him over in Alabama uh, several years ago. And what I see and the way he deals with this situation is the same way he dealt with his life prior to having this disease. He's still constantly upbeat and cheerful and changes the whole room when he comes in. It's unbelievable, his attitude. And I think that's the mark of a great person. So that that's well, I what appreciate that. my mind. Coach, uh, uh, I appreciate those words. And I'll share with you that uh, week before last, I was diagnosed with uh, polypsychothemia, which is bone marrow cancer, uh, in addition to ALS. So, you know, your prayers are. Uh, Greatly appreciate it, but hey, man, life goes on, and you got to keep living. Uh, a lot of people have uh, left left this world since I've been diagnosed, so you don't know when the Lord's going to bring you home, so hey, live every day. Squeeze out every bit of energy that you got, treat people right the way you want to be treated and do your best to love everybody. Some people are hard, but you still, you still got to try it. And I appreciate all the love and support that you guys have given me. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. That's right. Hey man, y'all, hey, don't y'all get some moment. <laughs> I'll try to find a collection plate to pass around. Uh, <laughs> you just made you just made me feel like my knee replacement surgery I just had was nothing. I ain't mm-hmm. complaining no more. My God. <laughs> hey man, well, everybody the got their problem. That's the thing when you have injuries and, and those of us that played a long time. Um 
I've had five shoulder replacements. And I, thought, I thought that was a big deal for a while until um, I saw Carrie in that wheelchair. And I realized that uh, my little thing is not a big deal. Most right. of the things we deal with are not a big deal. And now this cancer, uh, Carrie, what is the, what is the cancer? What are, what are the treatments and what are they telling you about well, uh, that situation? It can be managed, but it is a progressive deal. But we don't worry about that part. Because day to day, let's get up and let's fight. There you go. Well, I, you know, I don't worry about diagnosis. I'm still living. Mm. Period. Well, that's exactly what we see when, when we see you. And it's a great in, inspiration. And that's another thing uh, when you're dealing with the worst kind of situation. Um, the fact that you can still inspire other people um, speaks volumes about your character and about your faith. And, and your family, too. Your family's been so supportive and I, I had the privilege of meeting uh, your mom and others at some of those things we uh, we attended well you know i've got uh five kids looking at me for an example mm. if i crawl and stick my head on the rock somewhere what are they gonna do so yeah. hey, you, you, you gotta be an example for them. your kids either way Regardless of what happens to you, yeah, well, you know, I, you're certainly doing that. What you put out comes back in. So, absolutely. Uh, what's one of the most amazing things? One of the most amazing things I've learned is uh, your first thought is to help others, and, and it's very reflective in all your posts throughout social media and the way you're using that platform. Uh, to minister to others mm -hmm. and to give hope to others and breathe life into others. And that's probably one of the greatest ways you can leave a legacy. So it's, it's amazing to wake up every morning and I, and I see that either it's on LinkedIn or Facebook or wherever you choose to post it. Uh, it's just amazing the the love you have for people and how you, know, you form your organization, uh, you know, to, to, to make a difference in their lives too. So, well, uh, uh, what, what really happened is I was sitting at the clinic, uh, when you see the doctor and I saw a lot of other ALS patients in the room that had gotten up and drove from South Alabama and South Georgia and they'd been on the road since three, four o'clock that morning for eight o'clock appointment. Mm -hmm. So I looked at my wife and said, We gotta do something to help that 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 situation out because I knew how rough it was for me. And I only mm. lived 45 minutes. Yeah. Just imagine getting up at three in the morning to go to a doctor visit. Mm. So that's how we found the Goose. Found that the Goose Foundation was to help other ALS patients and their families uh, put them in a hotel the night before. Mm -hmm. They have the kids mm -hmm. out. Every, everything we do is. Something I've seen that ALS patients are suffering with. We now give out scholarships mm. to the kids of ALS patients. I think um, we've done it the last two years, and we've already given out six six scholarships. So, mm. uh, and we we pay uh, utility bills and all. All kinds of stuff, man. Just if you guys you got, you have name recognition. Lord gave it to you for a reason. Mm -hmm. Use it to help somebody. Mm -hmm. So you know, don't don't hog your name for yourself. <laughs> and that that was my whole uh, premise behind starting the foundation. Yeah, Carrie, awesome. can you can you get the uh, Get somebody to send us or email us the um, the name of your foundation and the address and how we can participate, how we can pitch in. Okay, I will do that. Yeah, definitely it's send good, it to uh, us too. It's uh, foundation.org. But I'll get somebody to get my wife. Type okay. it in the notes for you. 
and we'll promote on the show every week too. So, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll do our part as well. Yeah. And the guys on this show know how to reach me. And I, I think you've got my information too, Carrie. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. Well, right. good. I'll good. send it to you. Well, uh, as our time uh, winds down, <laughs> okay, okay, we'll definitely uh, add that to our weekly um, uh, promos for sure. But as as we wind down, uh, guys and coach, if you would share with us your best Alabama memory or your favorite game uh, for the fans who are watching tonight. And Carrie, we'll start with you. Oh man. You know, I really don't uh, can't pick a memory. Um, that's one that stands out. I, I enjoyed all my years there, even the difficult one when I was going through the knee injury. Mm -hmm. It was for me when Coach Curry came in. Uh, just to have an opportunity to play that fifth seed and get back up and running and playing at somewhat of a, a decent level boy. And, uh, he gave me that opportunity and it ended up being able to get drafted and play uh, in Tampa. So Boston College game was great, but I enjoyed all, uh, all five years there. So to pick one thing I would be I can understand that. Oh, that mine, mine's easy. Mine's a Coach Curry special. <laughs> we went, to, we went to uh, Baton Rouge. We were, we were, we were coming out of the tunnel. They were poking the tiger, and the tiger was hitting the cage and screaming. Coach Curry got his arms folded, looking at the tiger. You let's go out and get him. <laughs> like, <laughs> we ran out of the field. We must have run top sweep about twenty five times. I'm like, wow. <laughs> it was so bad at the end of the game. I'm like, yeah, we're coming your way, dudes. I don't know what to tell you. So <laughs> Yeah, who won? I remember that very distinctly. I so, who won <laughs> down that game. Yo, yeah. I did exactly. <laughs> Carrie, you stole my thunder. My, I, was, I was asked tonight to to do my you know come up with my favorite Kerry Good memory and that's it. Uh, they, they knew you were a, a great running back. They didn't know you could throw the ball. And uh, yeah, threw it down. Oh, yeah. head back pass. Right. It was a beautiful throwing catch, and somebody showed me a tape of that within the last couple of years, and I can't. I've tried rack my brain trying to figure out. Who has it? Because I don't know. I, I would I would love to have gotten it so we could watch it tonight. But I can't. Uh, my brain is so. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I'm I'm not going to confess. Uh, <laughs> brain damage is already set in, but I can't remember where I saw it. Yeah, I got brain damage it's called age damage. <laughs> Great throwing. <story. laughs> was that Marco Battle on the other end? That was Marco Battle. Yeah. Yep. That's and that was that was the difference in the game too, if I remember correctly. It was. That's that awesome. That, great yeah. memories for sure. Yeah, Before we close, the knocking him off the ball, but he did that all the time. <laughs> he did it for thirteen more years. That's why he's having yeah. knees replaced. <laughs> <laughs> but he got yeah, to the Super Bowl well, twice, though. I don't worry about sure running that way. <laughs> Cause I knew he was gonna get his guy, even if he had to hold him. I remember the, I remember the coach not scared of that tiger. I was like, I said, man, he ain't afraid of that tiger. <laughs> <laughs> like, whoa, my God, this is gonna be crazy. <laughs> what happened with the tiger? I feel, thing? Uh, I feel like I told what. I told Willie Shepherd. I said, well, we're not playing the tie. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good answer, but I stayed as far on the side to wait from the tiger, put as many of y'all between them and me as I could. <laughs> well, Willie Shepard helped us get ready for that game because Don Lindsay, our defensive coordinator, was um, 
really ranting at the defense. When you get in this stadium, it's going to be so loud, and that tiger's going to be roaring, and it's going to, you, it's going to be the loudest crowd you've ever heard in your life, and it's going to be intimidating, and you got to prepare yourself. And Willie raised his hand, and uh, Lindsey was irritated because he didn't want to be interrupted. But finally, <laughs> Willie was in He said, what is it? What is it, Shepard? What, what, what do you want to say? He said, uh, Coach, uh, Todd don't lose in Baton Rouge. <laughs> That's That's awesome. said. Everybody right. smiled at each other, and Don said, "I call." I said, "Okay, that's enough. We don't need to meet anymore. Let's go <laughs> win." And, but I had I had been by the Tiger when I was 18 years old as a red shirt sophomore at Georgia Tech, uh -huh. and I realized that the Tiger wasn't going to get through those bars. So <laughs> didn't eat any of us, but they did. They did prod him with the. Uh, with that cattle prod to, to uh, and they had a microphone there to make it loud. Boy, it was loud. <laughs> no. <laughs> but shit, Willie had it right. We didn't have to play the Tiger. <laughs> <laughs> Marvin and Bo, did y'all have a problem with the Tiger? Oh, that, no. Peter had stopped all that by the time they played it. <laughs> <laughs> we had more of a problem getting hit with Jim Bean balls coming out the tunnel. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they did that too. Yeah. Hey, uh, I remember getting off that uh, that bus when that guy spit spit on Bill Condon. Man, I ain't never seen somebody get punched in the face. <laughs> oh, all right. Yeah. After that, that game, spit they spit on Bill Condon and uh. After that game, they put those uh, the fence up so we could go into the stadium on the, on the rest. Mm. <laughs> it was it was a spit and a punch. That was wrong. Well <laughs> and to be and it was all over. <laughs> well, I didn't even go near the tiger, so it was bad. <laughs> <laughs> he could have seen his own reflection in them glasses and ran anyway. You have to <laughs> we need to get I this straight. Say, yeah. Nobody was going Nobody. near the tiger. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. Before my voice goes completely out on me, I just got to tell you, appreciate you coming on and have me on. Uh, yeah. Love you guys and uh love you too, man. Hope you know I love you, man. I love you too, Carrie. Always great to see you. I'll be in touch. All right. Nice to see you. Absolutely, guys. Thank you all so much for coming on. It was an absolute yeah, blessing. Absolutely. Thank it's you. It's a great bunch of guys. I wish I wish I had known uh, who all, uh, I I could recognize Howard. I didn't know uh, everybody that was on there, but I'm I'm honored to be on with you and to uh, be a little part of Hopefully, a little encouragement for you, Carrie. Uh, you don't need much, but we love you, and we're going to be by your side. I appreciate and pray for you. it. Yes, yeah, sir. Still praying, brother. Still praying. Yeah. Absolutely, guys. Right, now, Absolutely. Hey, I've turned it over. I've turned it over to the Lord, brother. Yeah, hey. Yes, sir. I know you all have. right. I know you. I know you have. All right. Mom, you didn't well, get great. a dog over there, ain't it? <laughs> well, great show, guys. Outside, man. Right. Great show, guys. Before we go, roll tide. Roll tide, guys. Roll tide, roll tide baby. Roll tide.